Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis bringing you a new video on turrets and how we can use angles to calculate the rotation for our turret and also the tilt or pitch of the barrel to face an object. And in this scene that I've set up, I have this little bouncing cube that is moving in a perfect circle around this flat turret. But I've also added this second turret that is kind of at a 45 degree angle to this turret um, to show you how they behave differently depending on how the object is moving. Um, but you can see here this turret kind of goes back and forth, back and forth, and then this turret is kind of just smoothly rotating. And the reason being is, is because this is at a 45 degree angle, it's always trying to position that cube to be at zero degrees right in front of this. So it has to go back and forth until it's right in front of it. And you can see now it's going up and down and now that it's moving to the side you can see that it's slowly moving back forth because the cube relative to that zero angle um, is changing whereas on this one it's very smooth it's always right in front of it so it's smooth in a smooth circle and all we have to do is change the tilt so let's kind of get into how the code is set up for both of these though so the first thing that we did or first thing that I did on this was I created a uh, prefab object for our turret. Um, I have the turret base and the turret barrel. They're just two models. And I have an empty game object with a script on it. And all I did was um, I created this base, put that out there. That really doesn't do anything. It's just a model to make it look like there's a base. And then there's a barrel, which also does nothing really. But on the turret, I have a script. And that script first takes the weapon. The weapon is actually attached to the end of the barrel, this emitter laser. And in this case, on both of these turrets, I have it kind of stuck out quite a bit. Um, you can put it a lot closer. I was just trying to emphasize that you could see the laser leaving the barrel. Um, so you could see that, you know, it's shooting. Uh, but that was just more of a design decision. It has nothing to do with the logic of it. Um, then the, uh, the turret takes the laser and it fires as fast as the laser allows. So I have this, uh, this limit, I think, of like five shots per second um, where it's shooting that. Um, and so it's gonna fire it. The target is gonna be the cube. The cube is actually on this empty game object that's rotating. And I also have this, this uh, little script that I'm saying is just moving it up and down, um, like on a sine wave effectively. Uh, and I have a frequency and magnitude I can modify to test that. So, uh, but this game object is actually empty and the cube, uh, so the actual game object is moving up and down and rotating, but the cube has been set relative to that. And we've made that the target so that we can just shoot at it and place this, you know, we could rotate this, uh, this empty game object and get the behavior to change vastly, but still get, you know, our targets to test correctly to verify that it's working. Um, in my case, the way I ended up testing it was I put a second one at a different angle to show it, so that, to show that they're shooting at the same thing each time. But either way, I tested it very various ways and got the same result. It always points at the target. Now, one of the problems that you probably noticed was that the lasers keep missing, and that's because the turrets are not actually predictive. So they're shooting at where the box is the moment that it fires, but the lasers aren't fast enough to actually hit it. So in order to get something that's a little more predictable, we would have to, um, you know, to actually get it to shoot correctly, we would have to start tracking the, the motion of the object um, and, and putting that maybe into like an array or doing other calculations in order to get that. So for now, the turrets are literally just facing right at it. And if it moves slow enough, it's gonna hit. If it moves too fast, it's gonna miss. But the turrets always do face the object. Um, the barrel, um, so again, the, the emitter for the lasers is at the end of the barrel. The barrel is also going to change its uh, pitch or tilt um, to match whatever angle this is at relative to it. So um, we're going to talk about this real quick. The way that we're calculating this is we are assuming that this is on a plane. So this is at a 45 degree plane, right? And what we're doing is we're calculating the angle of the object relative to our turret on the plane that it's on. So this is, imagine that there's a 45 degree plane that extends all over this. Um, this is actually, so right now it's looking forward, looking straight ahead. This would actually be kind of, um, I would say maybe like 10 degrees away from it. So it's actually gonna rotate down a little bit um, and then it's gonna pitch the turret up. So you'll see it go forward. And then when this turns back up, it's actually gonna go, when it goes back up, 
this way directly because it's going up and down, then uh, that angle on the 45 degree plane is actually going to be like this. And so it's actually going to turn back a little bit. So that's why it was turning back and forth as it was shooting because as it goes up and down, its angle on that 45 degree plane is changing. It's going back and forth. Whereas this one, it's flat. That up and down doesn't matter to it. It's just rotating around it. So it's going to smoothly turn around. But this one at 45 degrees is going to go back and forth uh, because the angle in its perspective is, is going back and forth. Um, then, uh, so I've got the barrel here, which is, which is what I'm using it to rotate. Um, so we're going to go back into the code for the turret itself. So again, just looking at our, I made these public. You could do like serialized fields um, instead, but I made them public just to get the concept across. We're getting that weapon. We're going to fire that. Um, we're going to get our target and then we're going to get our barrel. So in my update method, I'm just saying aim. It's a function I made. And then I have weapon.fire. So I'm firing that weapon, that emit laser, we're going to fire it off. Um, and all that's doing is creating the prefab um, that gets shot. And then that rate gets a rate cast um, laser that moves forward at a speed of, I think, like 200 units. So in the aim function, there's two parts to that. I am turning and I'm also rotating that barrel up and down. So the first thing is the turn is actually utilizing this function that I had introduced in a previous video. I'll link to that below, or actually, I'm sorry, I'll link that up to that above. You'll see it pop up here in just a second. Um, but this, this function that I created was this vector three angle on plane. And let's talk about this function again real quick. What we're doing is we want to find the object that we are looking at. We're going to get our position we are going to find the plane normal. And what this means is the plane normal is the direction um, like perpendicular to the plane we want to fire at. Um, and so that, from my perspective, is always going to be for a turret down because you're looking down at the turret and you're trying to find the angle. Like when you think of what angle should my turret be rotating towards, that angle is going to be typically in our minds, we think of we're looking down at the turret the front of the turret is zero degrees, and when we go clockwise around it, we have a positive to the right and a negative to the left. So when I say plane normal, we want to look down on the turret. We're not under the turret looking up, which you might want to do, but really um, think about it as if you were actually facing it. You're going to look down from the top. So I say down, and even up here I call this function, I say transform.up negative because there is no transform down. Um, and so then the vector three to zero angle. So this is, when I say two, this is the two, we want the zero angle. And I'm saying the zero angle is the forward of the two. So what I'm saying is I want the forward, the front of the turret, if it's right in front of it, that's zero. And that's how my angle is calculating. And I'm doing two things in this function. I'm using vector three, projected vector, equals the vector three project on plane, which is something I'd mentioned in the previous video. How we do this is we get the from minus the two, and then we get that plane normal. And then I get that projected vector angle, and I get a signed angle based on that using the projected vector, which is our two, our zero angle, or I'm sorry, this is our from technically, and then our two zero angle. So that forward, that transform dot forward. Um, so we're getting the angle between that on the uh, plane normal. So the reason why, and now this is the sign angle, the plane normal here is actually being reused to figure out the sign. The plane normal, we're looking at the negative, um, the negative transform dot up, which is also basically just the same thing as saying transform dot down. Um, but what we're saying is we want to be clockwise, uh, the positive on the right, the negative on the left. So if the object is to the turret's right, we're going to turn right. If it's to the top turret's left, it's going to be negative and we're going to turn left. So that's what we're doing there. Um, we're reusing that plane normal uh, to figure out that axis with which we're rotating around uh, the sign of that axis, I should say. Um, and then we're going to return that projected vector angle. So that's how we do that. So we just say float target plane angle equals that vector three angle on plane right here. Um, Again, our, the target's position, our position, which way we're looking at it. So we're actually looking at it from 
and we're looking down on it, so we're negative transform dot up, and then the zero angle is going to be transform dot forward. Um, our vector three new rotation is going to be the new vector three, and that zero. So we're going to start out. We're not changing the angle for x. We're not changing the angle for z. We're changing the angle for y. So it's going to be that new target plane angle. We're going to add that effectively. So we're going to say transform dot rotate that new rotation, and we're going to use it in relative to ourselves. So basically, we're just always going to increase our rotation by the difference between the objects and our angle. So we're just rotating the face, basically. That's it. And then our up and down is also um, pretty simple as well. We're just going to say the up angle equals vector 3 dot angle. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative because we should always be facing it anyway. Um, this, this function should be making our turret face it. So we're never really going to have a negative to calculate. We just need the angle. So we're going to say target dot position from our barrel transform dot up. You could actually do this from barrel transform dot forward and make it zero. But what I did is I tend to think of how far up it is and then I just add 90. So what I'm saying is vector three up rotation equals a new vector three. And we're taking our negative up angle plus 90. So we're going to add 90 because technically the turret would be um, facing, instead of facing it, like the top of the turret would be facing the object. Um, so we're actually going to um, change our uh, rotation by 90 degrees to get it to the, the front of the barrel to face the object. And then um, we're saying barrel transform dot rotate up rotation again relative to itself. And um, it's going to face and fire. And that's really all there is to it. That's how you can make a turret face the object directly um, and you can fire at it. Now just remember if the object is far enough away um, or moving fast enough when you shoot the laser by the time it gets to the object it may be too late it may miss. So there's a lot more calculations that you may have to do. You may want to create for example a new object that you put in front of the the target um, and so that that object becomes your target and that target is let's say you calculate the player's uh, speed and there's a lot of other angle calculations you have to put in there but you say this new target is a target you can say its speed is going to be you know 200 and you put that target out 200 and where it will be um, and then you'd even have to calculate the speed of the laser. If the laser is 200 as well, you may have to uh, calculate a different um, forward position for the, the second target. Um, you could also do like an array where you can try to predict the change of the pace of a target. Um, there's probably, oh man, there's so many ways you could do it um, that, that it's kind of hard to say what would be the best way to do it. But you, you definitely want to have some predictable system say we're going to figure out where the player is going to be when we fire instead of firing right at them um, unless you have a really fast laser or you just have instead of like using a laser beam that flies you just have a laser that shoots in it's like immediate if it hits it hits so anyway that's all i really had for you guys today if you liked the video go ahead and hit the like button and thank you guys for watching i hope to see you next time